Hi, my name is Jesper and I'm part of the ST TouchDFX team. In this video I'll show you how to use the import export custom container feature introduced in TouchDFX 420. For this I have created a project and I have created a custom container here containing a button, a um, text area and a box progress widget. I've made an interaction where when I push the button I will execute some code that will set the value of this uh, or increment the value of this by one. A custom container is a reusable uh, element in your uh, application so now I can go to this screen one I have here and I can add a couple of instances of this uh, center them and compile. And I have an application here. I can press here, see that I update this one, press this, and I update this one. So a very simple custom container in this case. We can also see that in the text uh, uh, panel here I have made a, a custom container typography set it to some uh, values here I've made a text and two languages um, one reading this and one reading this and we see that we have these this text used in the custom container so let's say that I want to reuse this custom container in one of my other projects or I want to share it with a colleague, or I want to share it online somehow, I now have uh, the option of exporting this custom container. The way I do that is simply by selecting the custom container here and pressing export like this. The designer will generate the project and make a description here on how the con custom container is being exported. And that is which elements from the project is included in this export. So we have files, that's the files that are used by this custom container. We have images, the images used, the text, that will be the resources that are used, the text resources, the typographies, the fonts, and which languages to export. The designer gives a qualified guess on what elements you want to include, but if you want to include others, let's say like a file, you can go and edit uh, this, add a new one uh, by changing this line. Anyway, let's not do that in this example. So let's continue. Uh, we are ready to export. We can change the name if we want to, but uh, for this, let's just go with custom container one. We press export and the uh, custom container is being exported. And we see here that we now have a custom container one TPKG file, uh, which is the custom container exported. Okay, so we have done what we wanted. So now we can try to import this into another project. So if I go to the lobby, just create a new uh, project here. It will open up a new instance. Yes, here. So, if we set a background, white background like this, um, we see we do not have any custom containers naturally in this newly created uh, project. But let's uh, change that by importing the custom container we just made. But before we do that, I would like to just add a new language to our project. So that we can see the language mapping that we are able to do uh, 
uh, when importing a custom uh, container. Okay, so we are ready to uh, import. Edit, import, custom container. And now we need to select a package to import. Over here, we see that we have the custom container one in the folder of the project we made before. Over here, and press open. So what we see here is a bit interesting, actually. So we have a list here of the components that that's being uh, imported, the one that we specified just before. And here we see we have a conflict. So a resource one or resource ID one, a text. Um, I just made that when I created the new language. I made a dummy uh, text entry. So what the designer is telling us here is that uh, it's a no-go to import this, it has a conflict, and if we were to proceed, then uh, we would override something potentially harming our application. So what we need to do is to uh, change uh, change this. So one way of, or the way of changing it uh, from this application is to make sure that we do not have a resource ID one text. Um, you could say that the fault here is the guy uh, who exported the custom container. He used a very uh, common name for his uh, resources, so he should have called it something uh, uh, that referred to this custom container, you could say. Anyway, let's uh, quickly uh, go and change it. So go to the text here. And, uh, call it something else instead. And now import again. Okay, so we see the conflict has gone away. One final thing to do before importing is to look at the language mapping. So remember we had two languages in in uh, this application, so German, German and English, and in the exported custom container we had German and Danish. Uh, so now we um, can select what mapping we want to do. So in this case, um, there was a match here and the designer uh, chooses to, to uh, use this as a default. And in this case, it's okay. German, well, it doesn't match uh, English or Danish. So I can choose just to go with uh, yeah, whatever the English, or I could say none, so it will not have any values. Okay, so I'm ready to uh, import. So that's it. I now have a custom container just as we exported it. I can use it again and make an application of this. So that's it. I've exported it and imported a custom container ready to be reused in my new project. So I hope you find this new feature interesting and that you'll be sharing a lot of custom containers with uh, yourself, your colleagues or people you don't know on the internet. Thank you for listening. Bye.